Welcome to another feed scroll generator tutorial for Autodesk Inventor. It's quite a fun one this time. They're all fun, aren't they? Especially so this time because we're looking at how to create a dwell shaft, which is, as you can see in this example here, a shaft where the bottles stop moving for a bit and then carry on moving again. We're going to be looking at using the bottle pitch editor table that we looked at in the last tutorial, number five, uh, and showing how we can create a row in the table which represents a standstill for the bottles. So that's enough chit chat. Let's um, finish this simulation by hitting delete to stop it. And let's return to this part. This is the finished part that we're going to create, but we're not going to do any cheating. We're going to cancel out of this and start a new part file to work with. So if you want to follow along, we'll be producing this dwell shaft from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, hit generate here to start a default shaft. And uh, we can set a couple of initial values. Let's just say that we do actually probably want the bottles to be a bit further away from the center of the shaft here. Let's make that 100. And then let's get straight to defining the bottle pitch table that we want to use. So as we saw in the last tutorial, it's this switch here to go and edit that. And we get uh, just one pitch change to start off with, which is here. So I'm going to just have a quick think about how I want the bottles to behave here. I want the bottle pitch to start off at the, at the start of the shaft at 50, which it is already. And I want it to increase up to a bottle pitch of 120 millimeters by the time we are 300 millimeters along the shaft. So I'm going to make this one 120. Let's just set this transition to be zero for the moment. And I want the actual dwell section to be 300 millimeters along the shaft. But what I'm going to do is halfway before I get to 300 millimeters, I'm going to increase the pitch to 120 millimeters here because about here is where I want my dwell section to be and I want a nice smooth increase of speed up until we get to the dwell section. So we'll put that nice smooth increase of speed in in a moment but let's put the dwell section in first now. So I need a new row. I'm just going to hit this plus button to add a new row. Of course I can right click and add a new row below and copy the values if I want. And this is the dwell section that I'm about to create here. So just watch carefully what happens when I enter this in. I'm going to put in the position of the dwell section I want is 300. So I'm going to enter that in. And then the pitch here, I'm going to enter a pitch of zero. And watch carefully what happens when I click outside this cell here. You see the editor actually adds another row in for me after the row where I've entered a pitch of zero. Of course, a pitch of zero means that the bottles are not moving at all. One bottle's laid on top of the other one. Let's just put a value of zero in for the transition here so that we can see. And let's just fill in these values for the extra row that it's given me for free here. This is what pitch do we want to exit the dwell section at? Because of course the bottles are going to enter the dwell section at a pitch of 120. They're going to exit the dwell section at the pitch that I type in here. So let's make that 120 also. And then let's enter a transition value of zero here. You notice the preview has not updated. That's because as we saw in the last tutorial, the preview doesn't update until all the values in the table here have been validated until they're all okay and all entered correctly. So let's put a transition of zero in here and we should get an update for the preview and you'll see the dwell section that we've created there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So pitch starts off at 50 and then at 150 millimeters along the shaft in this direction, remember, the pitch then changes to 120. We want to make this a smooth change, which we'll do in a moment. And then at 300 millimeters along the shaft, this is this distance is 300 millimeters. And let's just hit undo. I think I copied that line there. The pitch suddenly changes to zero. Again, we're gonna to have to smooth this off, but the pitch is then changing to zero, which is this horizontal line. And that happens for how far, how many rotations of the shaft is it at zero pitch? Well. Here's where we have the last two columns here, the shaft rotation in degrees or full rotations. This is actually set it to a half a rotation where the bottles are currently not moving. But check this out carefully here. You see these values 
for the amount of rotation of the shaft are read only for all the other rows but for this row where I entered a pitch of zero we can enter a different rotation amount for the shaft to decide how long we want these bottles to be stationary how long we want them to stay still so if I wanted to for instance I could put a shaft rotation of 0.8 here 0.8 shaft rotations the app knows that this is not a sensible amount because the bottles would then be clashing with each other so let's try a rotation of 0.65 and it will let us enter a value of 0.65 rotations of the shaft for the bottles to stay stationary here but let's just have a look at the preview you see here the bottles are staying still for too long they're clashing with each other we need this bottle to get out of the way of the next bottle coming along so let's just turn off this preview the fit to screen when we make changes so that we can see these values the spacing of these bottles changing and updating how long can we get these bottles to stay still without them clashing with each other well let's let's take a look if we enter in 0.55 here 0.55 rotations that's fine the bottles are no longer clashing let's see if we can do 0.6 rotations okay we can't quite manage that let's try 0.62 oh sorry I should be going the other way 0.58 okay so the bottles are not quite touching there so this may be an acceptable design that we've got here of course we could enter the values in degrees there as well that would also be fine and then after the dwell section the bottles are going to exit the dwell section at a pitch of 120 millimeters okay so let's zoom out let's uh, turn this fit to fit to screen option back on again maybe make a quick change in here so that we can see it fit to screen once we make the change let's change it back to 120 okay we need to come in and refine this this route for the bottle now because we don't want the the changes of pitch to be so sudden as this in tutorial number five if you remember we did have sudden changes of pitch and it didn't really cause any negative effects you know the bottles don't mind a reasonably rapid change of speed but I want to actually introduce a deliberate mistake here in the creation of this and not put the put transitions a smooth change between these pitches and generate a preview shaft so that you can see the error that will result if we do forget to put in some decent smooth transitions so let's say okay let's say we do want to accept this new uh, bottle route that we've defined with the table now of course we see the bottle table here in the bottle pitch section uh, let's save this part save it in the right folder and remember as I said before we can switch that bottle pitch table off here and switch it back on again if we want and that will toggle between the two different ways of defining the bottle pitch but as I said a moment ago we want to generate a preview shaft without introducing those smooth transitions and see what we get out as a result I'm just going to um, head into the settings here and say uh, if I click on the settings there I actually want a few more cuts on the preview shaft just so that we can see let's set the quantity of cuts to 252 and hit save and then and then we'll generate the preview build as you may have seen in the other tutorials the preview build does a sort of a rough cut of the shaft without any smoothing or loft surfaces but it will give us a really good idea of the kind of geometry that will be created by the app in the background and used to loft the finished surfaces so I'll say no I don't want to continue with another operation here this is the kind of background geometry that the app will have to work with if we were to generate the shaft with the current bottle route without the smoothed transitions so let's take a look at this area down here you see the area here uh, at the start of the shaft there's no problem we don't have any uh, clashes any intersections that's all fine but if we look at the dwell section here this is where we will cause a problem currently 
Now what the app's going to try and do is to try and use these profiles here as loft profiles to actually um, generate the shaft, giving away the intellectual property of the app here. But it's fairly obvious, isn't it? We're going to use these, use these lines here to generate lofts. But of course, if we're trying to use this line to generate a loft, that's going to cause problems. We're going to have intersections between our loft profiles. We need each of these lines to go right to the edge like they do here. OK, so we're going to have self intersecting geometry here and then at the exit of the dwell section, we're going to have some more self intersecting geometry here as well. OK, so we need a smoother transition to prevent that from happening. So let's let's hit generate again. And let's go back into the bottle pitch table and let's correct that. So I'm going to go and edit the bottle pitch table. And I'm going to add some transition values in there. So first off, we wanted the transition up to the pitch of 120 here to be smooth. Remember from tutorial number uh, five, we can actually apply the maximum transition there. I could right click here and say make smooth and watch what happens to the root as if I do that. You see we get the smoothest possible transition up to 120 millimeters. In this case, I don't want to do that because I need a bit of space here to do a transition into the dwell section. So I'm just gonna make that, let's say maybe uh, three or 400, which would be easily smooth enough. Okay, so we've got a nice smooth transition here, which gives us a bit of space for the transitions over here. So let's just zoom in and I'll turn off the fit screen and let's choose the transition amounts for around here. So. The question is how much of a transition we need to prevent that self intersecting geometry that I showed you before. Well, there is going to be a bit of trial and error with that. Let's try a value of 50 and let's try 50 again here. Now it's really impossible to say at this point whether that is smooth enough. I have done a few trials on a, uh, on a shaft like this, so I think we're going to try a value of 55. And we'll see if that if this is enough. If it's not, the app will make it very obvious to us um, while the shaft is being created. Um, so let's say OK to that. This is our finished sort of design with the smooth transitions. We'll accept that and we'll save the part. We could do another preview build. In fact, we should probably do that to see the difference. Let's save the part. Let's run another preview build as it is. It's probably worth a couple of a seconds investment to uh, to see if the finished result has a good chance of success. Okay, I'll say no, I don't want to continue with another operation and let's take a closer look in here. Okay, so now this is interesting, yes, we can see we definitely do not have any self-intersecting geometry here. This looks much better. Let's look at the start of the dwell section. Again, this is totally fine. In fact, it looks like we could get away with a smaller transition there, doesn't it? As long as we don't have these lines touching, then we should be okay. Let's hit generate and let's try it with the current settings that we've got. And we'll soon see if the app is, uh, is going to be fine with it. So for a dwell shaft, we're moving down to the uh, creation settings here. For a dwell shaft, you're going to want to have lots of cuts. Give the app a chance to have plenty of accuracy for this dwell section here. So I'm going to move the loft profile slider pretty much all the way up to the top. And then the number of loft rails we need by comparison is really not going to be high because it's a circular bottle. We don't need a lot of rails to help the shape along. And we're just going to hit generate now. And what we may find is that we need to tweak some of these advanced parameters in here in a moment for a dwell shaft. But let's hit save and let's just go ahead and hit generate and we'll see whether the app uh, requires any, any tweaking to produce this. So we've got quite a lot of cuts to make in this example. It's got 650 cuts to make, so it's going to take a few more minutes to generate this shaft. I'll speed the video up unless we need to uh, cancel and make a change. OK, it's worth showing this here. The apps asked me whether I'm happy with these edges 
for use as loft rails. There is some help in the help file for this. If you look in the help file and search for manual input, that will tell you what we're looking for here. But basically we're looking for the edges to be not self-intersecting and they are to go right to the edge of the part, which they do in this case. So I'm happy with these two edges and I'm going to say actually accept all of the edges and say OK to that and it will carry on creating this shaft for me. There's some scenarios like that where the app's not quite sure if the geometry is self-intersecting or not, so it actually asks you for manual input to say yes, I am happy, or no, I'm not happy with those edges. So the app's now continuing to generate the shaft. Okay, this shaft is created in uh, 16 minutes or so. I was doing some other things on the computer which probably slowed it down a bit as well. I'll say I do want to continue with another operation. And uh, we'll run a simulation of the shaft so we can see the movement of the bottles. You can see the quality of the surfaces is very good here. It looks like we probably would have gotten away with a smaller transition value there. Remember we went for 55. We could probably try 40, 45 or 50 uh, if we want more time for the bottles to be still here. So let's just save the shaft and let's hit uh, simulate. Okay, and let's, uh, let's generate uh, those frames for the animation. As I said, remember we have to generate 70 frames here so it takes a while for the animation to uh, build itself. It's about 40 generated now. Okay um, and then actually I should have right clicked here to increase the speed. So let's right click and make that a bit faster and then hit go again. Okay, so you can see the quality of the surface is very good there, and uh, it's a really good result. Let's hit delete to finish the simulation, and thanks very much for watching, and have a great day.